Israeli nationals are currently voting for an unprecedented third election within one year. The voting is currently underway in Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu's main rival, Benny Gantz, has cast his vote. Now the big question is, can a third election in the space of one year break Israel's political deadlock? Candidates and campaign slogans remain largely unchanged. The ideological sticking points are rooted. Voting patterns are expected to remain consistent. There is no surety that a third election will break the political deadlock in Israel. The Israeli parliament has already failed to agree on a coalition after two previous elections that were held in April and in September last year and even before voting began. This time, the possibility of a fourth election loomed large. Now, Israel's leadership contest comes two weeks ahead of incumbent Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's corruption trial. It is also playing out against the backdrop of US President Donald Trump's Middle East peace plan. In the two successive elections held last year, both Netanyahu and his principal opponent Benny Gantz of the Blue and White Party fell well short of the 61 seats required for an outright majority in Israel's 120-seat parliament. In April 2019, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu managed to hold on to power. Netanyahu's right-wing Likud party got 35 seats, but it did not win an outright majority of seats. It was tied with Benny Gantz's Blue and White party. However, the percentage of votes won by the Likud was 26.45%, marginally higher than Blue and White party's share of 26.11%. In September, Gantz's centrist blue and white alliance won 33 seats, marginally higher than Netanyahu's right-wing Likud party that got 32 seats. The run-up to Monday's parliamentary elections feels as if nearly everyone involved in the race is still committed despite the two previous inconclusive results. Candidates, campaigns, voters and the political media is staggering through the motions like the undead doomed to repeat the process without an end. To discuss more about uh, the elections in Israel, joining us live now is Jody Cohen, international affairs expert and uh, she joins us live from Netanya. Jody, welcome to Beyond World is One. Uh, now, third elections in the last 12 months, is there clarity this time that uh, there will be a conclusive result? There is absolutely no clarity. I was at the poll stations this morning and spoke to a number of people from across the political spectrum. And the general consensus was that while they would like to see a coalition government formed after these unprecedented third national elections in the space of one year, there is not optimism that that will actually happen. There's a famous Israeli expression, which is permanently glida, which basically means third time ice cream. It means if you fail something once and you try again and you fail again, the third time round something positive will happen. But unfortunately, the uh, people in the polling booth this morning weren't feeling so optimistic. Right, but, but uh, what's the main election talking points, Jody? You know, one would imagine the Middle East peace plan is something that featured heavily in the Israeli elections, as did the settlements that were announced by Netanyahu in East Jerusalem just days before the elections. What's the stand as far as Netanyahu is concerned and his main political rival, Benny Gantz, is concerned? So the peace plan is definitely um, one of the factors playing a part in this election, particularly for the supporters of the joint list. The joint list is a coalition of Arab parties and they get most of their support from the Arab community. And they've really been able to galvanize their supporters for this election on the back of opposition to do the peace plan. And they're expected to increase their share of seats from 13 in the last one to 14 or even 15 or I heard their leader today saying that they're confident that they're going to get 16 seats. So if they do that, that could affect the balance of the um, negotiations, certainly. We're also hearing that the share of Likud seats is expected to go up. 
there was a poll by Channel 12, the final poll before the poll purda, where they don't allow polls in the day before the election. And that predicted Likud's, share, Likud's seats to go up to 35. And the reason for that is because they've really gone out for the same reason, on the back of the peace plan, on the back of defence, on the back of international relations and diplomacy with other countries and galvanized their grassroots supporters and gone to the communities where their support is already very high to try and get those um, perhaps you know, more apathetic voters out to vote who maybe didn't vote last time. Um, they may, maybe they didn't feel that their vote would make a difference, but to try and get them out this time. Right. Uh, just for our viewers, let's quickly remind them that Benjamin Netanyahu is uh, the longest serving prime minister of Israel. Meanwhile, his uh, main political rival, Benny Ganz, is a former chief of staff of the Israeli Defense Forces. So he too has a lot of uh, clout. Uh, now, uh, Jody, what's the different uh, this time from the previous elections is there are serious charges now against uh, Benjamin Netanyahu as far as corruption allegations are concerned. The trial is about to start. Did that have any impact on these elections? It definitely had an impact for from blue and white side. They have campaigned across all three of these elections on the basis of they don't want to see a sitting prime minister facing a trial. Um, on the other hand, as you said, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, who has been the longest serving prime minister in Israel, he has a, long, a lot of support across the country because of his record. And these people would um, say, yes, he is facing a trial. He might not necessarily be guilty. There'll be six years, uh, a six year process of going through the, the trial and any um, appeals. So their main consideration will be defense and international relations and looking at the peace plan certainly blue and white supporters are absolutely adamant that they want to get rid of netanyahu um so we'll see what actually happens if they manage to form a coalition government there's talk of perhaps there might be a unity government between blue and white and Likud if uh, lapid's influence is less on benny gantz um but who knows and Benny Gantz has been pretty consistent throughout that he won't sit in a coalition with Benjamin Netanyahu um, facing these charges. Right. Uh, Joey Cohen, uh, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond and sharing your insights on uh, the Israeli election. Certainly third election in less than a year and the possibility of fourth looms large. But we hope that Israel gets uh, a strong and stable government.